Good morning, everybody. Well, I uh, hope you're having a good morning um, and have had a good week so far. Uh, today, we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And as we're reading, uh, I want you to remember the acronym for space, which is, let me read it here. Uh, S is, is there a sin to confess? P is there a promise to claim? A, is there an attitude to adopt or adjust? C, is there a command to obey? And E, is there an example to follow? Um, and I know some of those really stick out to me from reading this chapter. So uh, just be thinking about that while I'm reading. Um, but before we start, let's have a quick word of prayer. Uh, dear Lord, just please, uh, I pray that you bless this time. Please send the Holy Spirit to guide us as we're uh, listening and as I'm reading. Help me to get the words right and the message right. And uh, just pray for your will to be done. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, am I not an apostle? Oh, I'm also reading from the New King James Version. Uh, chapter 9, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. Verse 3, my defense to those who examine me is this. Do we have no right to eat and drink? Do we have no right to take along a believing wife, as do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working? Whoever goes to war at his own expense, who plants a vineyard and does not eat of its fruit, or who tends a flock and does not drink of the milk of the flock? Chap uh, verse 8. Do I say these things as a mere man, or does not the law say the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about, or does he say it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he who plows should plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should be a partaker of hope, of his hope. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? If others are partakers of this right over you, are we not even more? Nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, if we have not used this right, uh, but endure all things, lest we hinder the gospel of Christ, do you not know that those who minister the holy things eat of the holy of the things of the temple, and those who serve at the altar partake of the offerings of the altar? Even so, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. Ch uh, verse 15, but I have used none of these things, nor have I written these things, that it should be done so to me. For it would be better for me to die than that anyone should make my boasting void. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What is my reward then? that when I preach the gospel, I may present the gospel of Christ without charge, that I may not abuse my authority in the gospel. Uh, verse 19, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews, to those who are under the law, as under the law that I might win those who are under the law, to those who are without law, as without law, not being without law towards God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. 
To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by my means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I may be partaker of it with you. I really like that part of it, just this is a little aside from the reading, just verses 19 through 23. It's just kind of, to me, putting ourselves in other people's shoes. Like, I don't know what it's like to be a Jew, but I'm going to try my best to see what a Jew's like so I can minister to them. So trying to understand where other people are coming from is, to me, what I get from reading that and what is the uh, example to follow from the SPACE acronym. Uh, verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it to, into submission, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Um, uh, Pastor Fordham says uh, in verses 19 through 23, example to follow, identify with people to reach people. That's true. Um, and Barbara says in, uh, for verse 14, if you preach the gospel, you should live by the gospel. Practice what you preach. That's true, too, because I don't know where the verse is about a clanging symbol, but I know when uh, somebody's trying to tell me something and they don't do it, I just turn the off switch on listening to them because I think they're idiots. <laughs> so uh, that's a good example to follow is that we should practice what we preach. Um, I feel like I've gone through this pretty fast and I was looking for some uh, other uh, responses on here, but uh, oh, oh wait, from Pastor Ogis, verse 22, uh, it says, all things to all men that I might win some is an example to follow. Uh, very true. Um, I know that if we don't understand each other, and understand other people, especially people that don't fought like this chapter was this whole book was written written to the Corinthians who knew about Christ. And so he's telling us to go out and understand that not everybody believes exactly the same way we believe. So we have to put ourselves in their shoes so that when we talk to them, we're not talking over them um, or, or using terms that they don't understand. If you say something like drink the blood of Christ to someone that has no idea what the Bible says about that, they're going to think you're crazy. So you have to understand where people are coming from um, when you're talking to them. Uh, Nikki says, verse one, attitude to follow, preach to save others, but make sure I'm saved myself. That's true. Uh, she also says, wait, for Ms. Pastor Fordham says in verse 27, an example to follow. Oh, wait, I'm reading them backwards. Nikki, it says, uh, decide your life, dedicate your life to God, and let him make you more effective. That's true. Uh, uh oh, this is from Gator. Uh, amen, Barbara. Practice. We are talking about practice, meaning keep striving until it becomes natural. Thanks, Earl. Uh, I appreciate that, uh, and thanks for being here, too. Um, so I think I went through this pretty fast today. Here's another one, announcement. This is, uh, oh, to let you know, too, that I'm going to read this, that uh, this is from uh, Pastor Ogeese. Join the regional conference virtual convocation began last night. It continues through Sabbath evening and ends with a virtual concert. All meetings can be found on the Oakwood University YouTube and Facebook Live channels. Uh, you can also look at your uh, email they sent out yesterday. Uh, it'll give you some information about that and I think some links too. Um, 
Amma says uh, in chapters, I mean, verses 7 through 14, it's important that we pay our ministers. True. We want them to eat. We want them to have a place to live and be healthy and happy. And that's a very important thing to do. Uh, you know, that's one thing, too, when it says uh, one thing that really stuck out to me. Uh, it says, uh, wait, in verse 8, do I say these things as mere men, or does not the law say the same also? For it's written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. I've read that verse several times over my years, but I thought, you know, I've never seen an ox uh, tread out grain or be muzzled, so I Googled it. It's really interesting. You know, they have these oxes going around trying to crush up the stuff to get the grain out, and sometimes they let them eat as they go, so they're partaking in the thing that they're trying to do to help others. So, and I think that's what we're talking about here is, you know, don't make it harder for people. Uh, you know, let them enjoy what they're doing and be part of it. Um, verses 20, this is from Firm and Fordham. It says, verses 24 through 25, an attitude to adopt. All the runners endure to win a temporary award we should do to win our eternal reward. That's true. Uh, and you know, honestly, when I, all the years I've read this chapter, I've always, and I may have this wrong, but I've read that striving for the crown 24 through 27 as about me, but I've never thought about it for, we should be running the race to win the prize and the prize is to bring others to Christ. This is the way I'm understanding this verse. And we should run the race to win that prize like we expect to do it. We expect to win souls for Christ. So don't just do it half-heartedly thinking, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. We should run it like we're expecting to win others to Christ. Um, uh, here's another one, verses 24 through 27. The doctrine of once saved, always saved is debunked here. That's over my pay grade, but I'm going to say yes. Uh, you know, you, you can't get dunked in the water, be baptized, and then do whatever you want. You have to live your life for Christ. Uh, from Nikki, yes, Pastor, you can keep the eternal prize. Amen. Uh, from Amma, example, verse 24 through 25, run with resilience and perseverance with a goal in mind. That is for sure. You shouldn't just fake it and just, again, not believe it. Uh, while we're going, I want to go back to um, something that Pastor Ogis asked about this morning uh, with these times here. He's, he's asking if anyone's willing to read a chapter for this time together, please call him. Uh, his number is 615-267-8690. Um, just give him a buzz. He would be more than happy to get that call. Um, oh, there it is from Pastor Ogeese. So it was just posted again, there's his number. Um, but anyway, thank you all for being here. Uh, appreciate it. And um, remember that acronym of space throughout the week and after reading this verse and when you come in contact with people that maybe you're not super familiar with, just thinking, how can I put myself in their shoes to understand them better so I can speak more clearly with them and relate to them better. Uh, hope you have a great day. And one last thing from Ama today, let's run the race. So get your, get your running shoes on, start running that race today. Uh, so have a great day and um, we'll talk to you soon. Oh, let's have a, let's have a closing prayer too. Uh, dear Lord, I pray that you help us to take this chapter and all these verses and the comments people said and help us to use them throughout the day and to remember it throughout the day. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to kind of lose hope in things sometimes, especially with the way the world's going right now. But I pray that you help us to run the race and to expect good things to happen and that we'll be successful in leading others to you. Pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Y'all have a good day. We'll talk to you later.